What's going on, world? It's your boy Boom back at it again, man. We got a great one, another great one. First, we had Carl. Now we got Ed, man. For that's a damn good question. I want to welcome everybody, you guys. If you don't know, this man is the man that Hollywood literally calls when they need beautiful women. Literally, when music, Hollywood, whatever, when they need beautiful women, they call this man right here, man. We got casting director extraordinaire, man entrepreneurial guru man we got ed mills in the building man ceo of mills ticket what's up man how you doing what's up boss how you doing man just out here working trying to maneuver my way through this pandemic facts facts man you you've been maneuvering very well for <laughs> not just the <laughs> pandemic but for years for years now man but um a lot of people don't know like who you are really i mean you have a huge instagram following so they should know who you are and then you know your name is literally at the end of most of the credits for your fate for artists favorite videos when it's nothing but baddies in the video they be like man where are all these bad girls come from they come from you so first thing i know everybody want to know man is how did you get started doing this as a casting director man i'm gonna be honest it really kind of just fell in my lap man i was i've always been a cool dude like you know what i mean i did like a little promotion here or there you know, when I was young, I started off like promoting, like when I was like 16, 17 years old, you know, me and a group of friends doing clubs. Like we were literally rent out clubs with our own money and do events and et cetera, et cetera. And then from there, you know, I was playing ball, college, you know, always kind of been well versed with ladies, you know what I mean? So it's been a pretty good thing, but you know, I was just dealing with the music industry first. I had to start managing artists and you know, doing things of that nature. And then I kind of slowed up, you know, artists get egos, et cetera, et cetera. And then a friend of mine said, hey, you know, why don't you come down to this video shoot? And I thought he was BSing me. So, you know, me, I kept delaying it and delaying it. And then I finally went. And it happened to be to like, telling my age a little bit, but uh, it happened to be the Jay-Z H the Izzo video. You know what I mean? And so I went, you know, made like four or $500 that day, just chilling with women all day. <laughs> I mean, it, it, was a, it was a crazy job that day, you know. Fast forward a little bit, you know, so every girl kept asking me, you know, to manage them or, you know, how do I get here? How do I get there? And, you know, cause they seen I had a good business savvy. I knew a lot of people, everybody was coming up to me like, like I was kind of that guy anyway. So, and I, you know, had a little muscle too, you know? So <laughs> with that aspect of things, you know, it was a good combination and, you know, it started from there and I kind of started kind of representing girls and building the rapport with people. And then, you know, they kept constantly calling and kept coming back like a boomerang. And then from there, I think I got my first official casting job. I kind of got one in TV and like video and film at the same time. Yeah. I got a, a casting position at MTV. <laughs> you know what I mean, for a TV show. And then at the same time, I use that to kind of validate my company coming in on the other side. For sure, for sure. Now, when did you, um, I mean, I know you start, you you had, you, you realized it was a company just based on the uh, minimum talent that you had at the time. But when did you realize like, man, this is really a career. Like I'm really about to do this for the, I mean, for the foreseeable future. Man, I didn't really, well, I'm going to tell you a story because in the beginning, I don't really know what it was. I thought it was like, when I got the MTV job, I thought I was on, mm -hmm. you know, I thought, it was, oh, now I'm the MTV, I got the badge, I'm going to Vegas, using the badge to get in club. I work for MTV, you can't tell me nothing, you know, I'm yep. posting up, have a group of homies with me, girls with me, we ain't giving us free tables, all kind of stuff, right? So I'm thinking I'm on maybe like three, maybe a month in. The show's ended. It's gone. Yeah. So the, when that ends, you end. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but you end as far as that position goes at that time. And I didn't understand it. So I had uh, asked one of the other casting people on the job, like, hey, so what do y'all do from here? they like, oh, we just get on unemployment. I said, wait a minute. You just get on unemployment? You happy with that? You cool? Like, mm -hmm. like yeah, that's just the thing. Wait till the next gig comes. So what I did was I developed a relationship with like, you know, some of the bigger wigs and and I did so good and was at the top of my class each and every time. They said, you know what? 
I'm going to bring you aboard everything I do. Any job, you ain't got to worry about it. So it, by the time that was going, and then I had my other stuff going, it started rolling, you know. And with it rolling, um, like you said, to go back to what I feel like I actually like was like, okay, that's it. Maybe I'm going to say around 2010-ish, 11, off in that realm. And I was like, okay, th this going. I started working with Snoop. And 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 it was like around All Star Weekend. I think that might have been 2011. You know what I mean? I know I was in the game, but I was really in the game when I feel like Snoop knew me. Yeah. Like I had cast a job for him, and I'm there. I, I just kind of be a fly on the wall when I do my work most of the time. I'm a fly on the wall, and then he says something like, "Ain't that right, Ed Mills?" And said my whole name. I, I never had spoke with him anything. He knew my whole name. And I always thought, to be honest, I just thought he would just, you know, smoke a lot. You know what I'm saying? And wouldn't remember anyway. Yeah. And, nah, that let me know how sharp he really was, how well he is on his business, and how good of a businessman he is. You know what I mean? And that's when I knew I kind of was made it to a level where I was recognizable and work could keep coming. And I just knew I just had to keep growing and plant seeds to keep growing. Facts, facts. But, um, I mean... You've done film, you've done commercials, like you said, man, but you best known for, for your music videos, man. Like, so when did you realize, cause like a lot of people get that misconception, like as far as casting directors go, y'all just like whoever come, y'all just pretty much pick them or whatnot. Like, or y'all just get the girls that sleep with y'all or whatnot. But you, you've always been a serious dude when it came to this. Like you've never been involved in any type of controversy, no nothing. Like you've always been a straight businessman with it for years now. And it's like, how did you determine like where it was like, all right, cool. I'm, I get, I'm getting booked for these gigs. Like people are calling me for these gigs, but I have to make sure that my, my stable is on point. Like my stable of uh, models is on point. So when did you realize that you sharpened up everything and made sure everything was up to par on a regular basis, whereas girls come to you and be like, oh, you you such and such, so you could put me in a video like automatically. So when did you realize that you was taking this serious? Well, at, at, a, at a certain point, I knew once I got in the game, I seen a couple of the quote unquote forefathers before me kind of doing the, what I was planning on doing. So I seen their, the pros and the cons of it and the mistakes they made, you know what I mean? So I try not to make those mistakes. I said things I wouldn't do and how to better what I was doing. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, you know, they might have dropped the ball when I knew they could have really ran with it for a lot longer and how they presented themselves. So what I did was I figured one thing, I may not have been the best at that time, so I'm going to figure, I knew branding and marketing from dealing with the music. So I'm going to brand myself in a way that nobody can compete and everybody want to be a part of it. And from then, that's when I started sharpening my tool where I had to have the best of the best and, and you know, create a lifestyle around what I was doing and have them want to be a part of the lifestyle. And that's where it came in from. For sure, for sure. Now you've created, um, you've created content for yourself, for just your brand in general. But how do you make sure not to get sucked into this lifestyle? Well, I realize there's a reality. It's really it's a reality to this. You got to know, like, okay, a lot of this is a big facade. You know what I'm saying? As far as people's real lifestyle and what they really have and what they really don't. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, like you say, like you said, a lot of rappers are telling a story, somebody else's story, not necessarily theirs. You know what I mean? I know how to create, I know how to paint a picture and be a great artist and then also take my butt home and then come back <laughs> you know what I'm and yeah. to work the next day. You know, you know how you go to work one day and, or a regular person go to work, they go work at, I'm, I used to work at UPS. So I go to UPS and I, I got to work, bust my butt, do what somebody else tell me to do. And then I come back home. Same thing with this business. You got to know when to turn the switch on and when to turn the switch off. For sure, for sure. Now, when yeah. did, how do you make sure, I mean, being, doing that, you deal with just gorgeous models all the time. And then the way, 
this music business is, man, it's not, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare behind the scenes, man. There's so much that goes on behind it, but how do you maintain, you've always maintained not only um, a safe environment for you and your, and your um, employees, but like the whole like set as a whole, like you've never had any issues where a girl has called out and been like, yo, I got assaulted or this person did this while we were on the set and whatnot. How do you make sure that these sets are, from your point of view, how do you make sure that these sets are safe? Like, cause that's a lot of things that a lot of people don't really do. Like casting directors would be like, hey, go over there. And then whatever yeah. you see, you'd be like, oh, that happened? Like, oh man, my bad. But you've always been a, that stand up dude that makes sure like nothing happens. Like everything is a safe environment. Like I said, man, like a lot of things, like in the earlier years of this business, I heard a lot of the horror stories. You know what I mean? Like, so how I created my company was I came in as the muscle. I came in as the protector. You know what I'm saying? I came in as, okay, a dude ain't trying to pay you. I'm going to get your money. Uh, I'm, I'm a, me and my guy going to go get the money. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we going to make sure they're not doing anything or you don't have to do something to get this position. Like, I don't really like guys that try to use the business to try to get women. So that was my whole reason for creating it. And like, you know what I'm saying? I never had an issue really getting women, you know, coming up at a young age. So I never had to use this business to be like, oh, I got this, I got this, or I can get you in this, come be with me. That's not my thing. And that's not, I don't want you to think that's how this whole industry is. So now we're going to come in and create a great position for you and the business. And then I'm going to build a rapport with the people that we're dealing with. So they understand and know, okay, this is how they get down and they do great business. They come to work and they leave so I can use them again and again and again. And that's how we keep this thing going. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So how do you, um, I would say, like, how did you, um, I know your DMs is full, man. Like, and it's funny because it's not full for that. It's not full for, like, the normal guy reason. It's not full because yeah. you, I mean, you transcended into a celebrity yourself now, just being that that guy that, you know, casts all the music. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> no, I seen that Vegas. I seen that Vegas video one time. He was like, birthday party. It's my birthday party. Next, you know, you come in, it's you by yourself and you got like 17 girls behind you like <laughs> tell me I can't come in here I'm about to be in here like no nah, I mean yeah. you've, you've earned your you've earned your clout for sure for sure thank you but sir thank you how do you make uh what about dealing with like as far as like I said with the DMs man I know girls hit you up all the time from all over the world not just LA all over the world just being like yo I want to get down with you I'm trying to get to I'm trying to get in these videos I want to be famous I'm trying to get paid like what do you tell them when they when they hit you up and just be on some hey I just I'm just trying to get in and get paid I don't want to be famous like you tell them obviously that this is not what you think it is <laughs> no absolutely man I kind of kind of got a you gotta have an eye in this business first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got a pretty good eye if I would say so myself. And I kind of got a good vetting system. You know what I mean? I kind of, you know, look at their page, look what's going on. I, I even might bring you in to my office to meet you, see what you're about, see what your goals are. Because most people don't even have actual goals when they come into this business or have a strategic plan of what to do. Like everything I've been doing and everything I laid out, it's planned. People will tell you, like, I'm not sure, random people you might interview later on, you might ask them a question, Bobby, and they might tell me, tell you, well, he had a specific plan. He told me the plan, what he was going to do, how he was going to do it, and he, he executed. So, you know, with that said, you know, I also, you know, vet them over to my assistant and let them, let him go through them before he even get, they even get to me. So I tell him, email my assistant, CC me on it. He'll look at it, go through it, see it, then he'll be like, oh, yeah. You know, you might want to check out these. Then I vet it from there, and then you might make it to the office. And then you <laughs> might make it to the set. But sometimes I might bypass some of that and get you straight to set because I, I see you got good potential. Then I pop up on set and see what you really look like and your personality, et cetera, because I can take you for different projects outside of the music videos, which can do the commercials, films, print, et cetera. Now, have you ever had to cut girls because of, not because of their looks, because of their personality and their attitude? I've had to cut girls for both. I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, for looks, 
for cause, you know because now a lot of times a lot of people don't do actual audition no more because the budgets might be a lower lower sometimes yeah. so you see a coke bottle shape and you know <laughs> everything's just immaculate on, on, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever it may be, and you get there and you're not portraying what your pictures portray uh, in person. So the artist might approach me or producer might approach me and say, hey, this girl such and such. Do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, where's the lead at? I had somebody ask me, like, where's the lead at? Where's the lead? She's there, what are you talking about? I'll be here in a second, hold on. I get there, they be like, I get there and say, where's the lead? And I'm looking dead at her. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got an audible at that point. You <laughs> gotta go, and you're the lead now, and you're gonna be over here in the background, and that just happens. You know, I me mean, just part of the business. And as far as personalities go, yeah, I've had bad attitudes. Somebody that might get into it with the artist, they they think they're the artist, and they gotta go, or I gotta calm them down. They gotta play the background role right now, just because they attitude then just messes up the whole situation. <laughs> facts. You know I mean? yeah. yeah, you get a lot of weird situations going on, you know. Yeah, facts, facts. But do you do you normally um do you normally uh fill girls through uh through DMs now or do you just do it like nah look email me your headshots, professional photos, do all that, like the whole model real modeling process. Well, well, I, I'm a little I still do the old school way sometimes, you know what I mean? Like I literally do open calls every once, maybe probably like every quarter or so. You know, open calls where you come down, you know, I see you, you come with your head shot, you fill out my forms, the whole nine. And then every so often, you know, I might post on Instagram. If you see a girl that I've never seen, never worked with or need to work with, tag them and I'll pay you a hundred dollars if it's somebody that's worth it. Right. And if somebody that's worth it, I done paid a few people that I done met some good new talent. And, you know, so I use the old way, the new way and make it all work. For sure, for sure. Where are some... uh I guess I would say business models that you make sure to concrete into all of your employees to make sure that you maintain this level of professionalism and, you know, safe space. Man, I, I like to implement due diligence, integrity and honor in what we're doing, because that way, you know, you, you straightforward, people get what they what they want and everybody happy at the end of the day and at the end of the day we all about money and we all want to make money and we got to keep that money train rolling man that's what it is <laughs> at the end of the day but i mean i know you base i mean i know you do a lot of your stuff out of L, out of la but when did you start like expanding to other areas like new york's like lit vegas you know even out texas and whatnot when did you start expanding your reach and those are like you can't just pull up there. Like you can't just be like, all right, I'll be there in like an hour or something. Well, I mean, I guess you can if you got the you got the <laughs> flight and the jet pack, but you know, yeah. when do you when did you uh see when did you start expanding, like going out to other regions? I start moving around to other regions in about I would say 2010, 2011. Uh same time, like because I figured like LA was harder for me to get into, even though I'm from here, born and raised, but you know. You know, once people got it on lock, they got it on lock. You can't be mad at that. You know what I mean? It's part of the game. You got to wait your time. And so what I did was, I was like, man, if I, things are going kind of slow here, but I was like, if, th if things, after things start rolling and things ever slow up, I need to be able to go eat somewhere else. So what I did was, you know, uh, a, a director said, hey, you know, I got a job in Atlanta, you know, and I said, you know what, let me try it. Took a flight with him. On my own recording, I paid for my own flight. They didn't fly me out. I flew out, used that to hustle up the girls and find the talent, the extras, etc., guys and girls, and started working it. And that worked. I found some of the newest, hottest talent out there, and people was wondering, well, who cast this? They thought it was a local person, and it really wasn't. It was me finding, you know, the the diamonds in the rough, so to speak. And from there, it started building. I got another job. I got another job. So. I would go out there a weekend and just network and, you know, see how everything was. And then I would go to a, uh, I did another thing like that. I went to Miami, did the same thing. Went to New York, did the same thing. And then how I got my Houston was um, I got a rep out there by the name of Jay Milan. She's big in her own right. I ain't taking nothing from her. That's my, that's my heart. That's my family. That's my team. You know, she, 
she does it really big. She got the J Milan agency out there, but she also uh, a representative of Mill Ticket. So I had, she had came to one of my jobs in LA, and we got into it. She I said we got into it for the first time. Yeah, I tell you the story or not. We got into it. We bumped head. Turns out we had same exact birthday, <laughs> right? So same exact sign. So we a lot alike. We start seeing a lot of our similarities. So we start, you know, building a relationship, talking. And I liked her vibe. And then she hit me like, you know, I was getting jobs in Houston, you know, just just because. And I would get her. She was like, hey, why don't I just be your Houston rep? Because I was hitting her for some girls or something and see if she knew anybody. And she was like, why don't you be your Houston rep? I'll be your assistant. Duh, 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 duh. And then so I, you know, said, Look, let's go ahead. Let's make it happen. We'll give you a formula how I work it out here. I need you to work it out there because she wanted to try to come to L.A. a lot. And I was like, no, nah, look, you need to take over Houston first. You take over Houston, everything else coming. And she did that and took it and ran with it. And, <laughs> and, and she is who she is now. And we, we still talk dinner every day. We break a lot of bread together, do a lot of business. And, you know, that's how I did it. I just built it and spread those seeds and planted those seeds and kept building from there. It's, we here we do business in pretty much every major market that you can imagine in the states, and done some stuff overseas as well. Facts, facts, facts. How do you feel about doing being able to like? Did you really realize that in fruition? Like, I know when you started the agency, you didn't have no idea that you was gonna be doing overseas stuff, or did you realize like you was like, no, nah, I'm gonna take over the world. It's bigger than it's bigger than well, that. Well, I, I can't lie to you. Of course, you don't know that. But of course, you might be thinking that, like, yeah, I, I'm gonna put my stamp on the game. I'm gonna do this, but you, you hoping it's gonna go at that time. But in my head, though, in my mind, in my heart, I felt it was gonna be something. One day, it was gonna be big, real big, as Nip would say. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure, man. How did you um, throughout this whole journey, man? How did you? Um, I would say, how did you uh, met? Not morph, but how did you change your? perception on looks between both men and women like when it comes to just for for booking because you know a lot of times I know a lot of casting directors be like somebody say hey they want to they want a, a beautiful girl or they want a beautiful guy they'll just go to a straight regular stereotype like okay just look for the biggest the biggest buffest guy and then look for the like <laughs> most voluptuous girl that still got a slim waist and whatnot, but like you find unique in beauty, like in, in various areas along with the stereotype. But how did you uh, change your perspective on just looks? Well, what, what, what I had to do was I kind of developed what, what's my hot is, you know what I mean? It's like developing your own style, just like Michael Jordan developing his style, in his game. And then, Kobe might have saw his style and still developed his style out of his game. So what I looked at was the ones before and, and the ones coming up at the same time, and I developed my own style and look and vibe and created what's hot at this particular time. And I kind of dictate what's, what was hot in the, between the period that I've been running this casting portion of things and still doing it as well and, still, and reinventing what's going on. For sure. Yeah. Now, man, you know, you didn't just wake up one day and was like, yo, I'm going to be a casting director. And then Tiger and 50 Cent and G and Game and everybody calling you up talking about, oh, hey, we heard you a casting director. We need girls. So, like, man, what are some what are some of the, the pitfalls that you learned or life lessons that you learned in this business working with the, you know, with the early talent, the early artists? Uh, a life lesson that I learned working with the early artists? Well, I, I would say this. I, I, I would say I learned I learned you have to work with the up and coming people to to carve your way in as opposed to thinking you could just jump straight to the top. Because I've worked with the YGs, the the Kendrick Lamars, the Tigers, the games in the earlier stages. And as they came and grew, I grew with them. So I would say develop a bond that are and, and don't shun the up and coming people as opposed to thinking, oh, I got to go straight to the top. No, it doesn't work that way. You got to build it and develop rapports with people and relationships and y'all build together as a unit. 
For sure. Now you've dealt, I mean, like you said, you grew with the up and comers, but I know it's a lot of up and comers today that see those videos and be like, all right, I'm going to hit him up because he got all the girls. So <laughs> what is like, what are some things you would tell these up and coming artists, man, about these videos when it comes to just booking talent and just making great videos with, you know, they ain't got the same budget as a as a game yg and tiger and whatnot like what are these what is something you would advise to these young up-and-coming artists you gotta realize this in the early in the early stages yg and tiger didn't have the budgets for them type of videos <laughs> you, you get what i'm saying yeah. so and i was a little more established at that time you know what i mean Th then they were in, in my field you know so so with with them i would work with them like, hey, let me know what your budget is. So I would say, have a plan and execute it. So develop, you know, if you see how a big production is run, mimic that on your own. So put together a small budget and say, hey, this much is gonna be for the cameraman. This much is gonna be for the director. This much is gonna be for a production assistant. This much is gonna be for the girls. And then we'll work with it within that budget. You know, whether it's, hey, I got $200, uh, for a girl or three hundred dollars for a girl, whether it may, whatever it may be, you can make it happen, and we find girls within that realm. So, so, so. Now, what about? Um, I know you've been doing it for so long. I know you have a lot of casting directors that are up and coming casting directors that hit you up and be like, "Yo, I need that mentorship, man," or "I just want to follow you, ghost you around, see see how you do it, and you know, learn learn the ways, the tricks and trades." But um, how do you take on mentors or yeah, how do you take on proteges now? Well, I try to help as much as I possibly can, but you know, it'd be hard to kind of vet each and everybody. So sometimes it puts a chip on people's shoulders when you're not really dealing with them and stuff like that. Cause you, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, I was one of those people where I used to try to assist somebody and they didn't let me in. So I said, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna retire that person. And and, and that was my, mo that was my motivation. You know what I mean? Wh which it helped. You know, but I still do business with that person now. I bring them in, we help each other, et cetera, et cetera. But that motivated me to get to another level. You know what I mean? But as far as me dealing with mentorships, you know what I mean? I got interns coming in, a few interns coming in there. Some people I might and might not want to deal with because after I sit down with them and see what their real motives is, why are you really trying to do it? You, it, you got to have something. I don't want to take the business back where it was because a lot of guys in that per se try to get in just to get, the, get at the women. Yeah, and I don't necessarily want that, you know what I mean, or necessarily value that aspect of, of a person trying to get in, you know what I mean. So I kind of really vet who I bring in because I didn't have people that I was trying to help out before and found out that's what it was, and I had to cut them off. For sure, for sure, man. Like you said, you had to cut them off, man. But what was it like firing that first person? I have no uh, remorse firing somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> <laughs> It's a part of business. I've been fired. You've been fired. You Everybody been fired. You always got that first. Yeah, we've always we've been fired. We've been the person on the receiving end of it. Oh shit. Yeah. So we've been that person on the receiving end on it. We we've never been um, the person you know actually having to be like, hey, look, it's it's not gonna work out. So, like I'm asking, yeah. man, what was it like firing that first person? Whether it was a model or whether it was one of your interns or one of your uh, yeah, it, 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 it was like a first like a little suck in the gut like, all right, man, but I got to make this happen. You know what I mean? And I, and I you know, that's like when you got to swim, you either gonna get you get thrown in the water, you gonna swim out, or you gonna drown. Which way you gonna do? So, hey, it's my business, so I got to make sure my business is right. You got to go right now. You know, maybe get your stuff together. Later on, you get it right. I might bring you back. It just depends. No doubt, no doubt. How do you deal with? Um, I mean, dealing with models, man. You know, they got egos too. Just like, just like you said, just like the rappers, man. How do you maintain these egos and you know make sure everything runs smooth, man? Because you know these girls would be like, "Look, I'm such and such now. I got thirty minutes." Matter of fact, let's jump into that. Okay, the Instagram numbers, man. You know better. Yeah anybody look them numbers don't mean shit a lot of the times man break down these these instagram models thinking they the you know they the shit man with these numbers well well you know man, these days man like instagram models definitely get paid you know what i mean because with the influencer marketing that has come in and people promoting their brands and songs etc cetera, etc cetera, a lot of them are getting paid but you got to just keep them grounded because you gotta let them know that might not be forever 
You know what I mean? Just like everything, like with, with filming and TV, that's around. You always want to be entertained. Now you got streaming. So you always want to be entertained. You're always going to be in a film. You're always going to be on, on a on a podcast, et cetera, et cetera. So you got to just keep them grounded and let them know where they came from. Because a lot of the Instagram models started with me from the beginning anyway. So that's why a lot of them I got access to. That's yeah. how I got a couple of them plaques behind me is, you know, <laughs> I got a whole influencer division where those are not for me doing those casting those music videos or, or, or dealing with that is for me actually doing the influencer mark digital marketing for those records and helping those records go I, and a lot more I, I should have a few more plaques up there but i've done a lot of records over the last three four years where i do a lot of influencer marketing with a lot of the social media girls but you know i mean a lot of them get a little big headed every now and then you got to bring them back down like look hey hey let's think about this think about where you was before and think about the money you talking about passing up you know what yeah. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know, but of course, I know a lot of them got to protect their brands of what it is and what it's not. So I understand that too. No doubt, no doubt. Now you, um, one thing as a casting director, man, and one thing you have to deal with. I mean, being you, you got to compete with the agencies, like with the real, like legendary, iconic, long-term agencies that have been around for so long that probably feel some type of way when people call you and be like, "Yo, I need a girl." And whatnot, or I need a no, 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 no. Let, let, let me correct you. I, I, I don't, I don't really compete with those agencies because I source from those agencies at times. You know what I'm saying? Like, see, that's what people get it get it confused. A casting director puts everything in the pot and presents it to the client. You know, so I might have my own pool of talent as well as from the agency, as well as from managers. You know, so it's all that in one that I do position over to the actual client which is the artist you know for sure for sure now in today's today's music landscape man is it does it still matter to be signed to an agency like does it still get that same feeling as it was when in the, in, in the 90s in the in the 80s like as far as runway and going on and doing all well this well it, it it still matters because you know a lot of people are not good at business. A lot of people don't know how to handle their business. So if you need someone to handle your business, I would say, yes, get with an agency. They have relationships. They know the business, et cetera, because like they might have a great relationship. If you're in a high fashion model with Gucci or Louis Vuitton, et cetera, et cetera, to get you in the fashion weeks and print ads, et cetera. But you know, if you don't have an agency, I wouldn't have it discourage you because you can, hustle and make those same calls yourself. It's just gonna take a lot more work. Sure, for sure. Now, when did you realize that you could take not only just cast, but you can also influ or use your, your resources for influence? When did you realize that? That earned you those plaques that you got behind you? Wait, wait, say it again, I'm sorry. Repeat the question, I have to text at the same time. Okay, so when did you realize that your resources you could turn into influence like you have, like with your influence company at earned you these plaques that you have behind you, man? When did you realize Well, well what was a, a lot of times, I don't even realize it. Other people from the outside in let me know and be like, hey, hey, like, like for this influencer thing, my boy who worked for Snoop, uh, his name is Tef, and he's a great manager and coordinator. It was like, hey, man, you got all these girls and testing me out on like a small project. He's like, why don't you create a company doing this? And I said, okay, let's do it. And I did it, it worked out well. And that's when it circled back around for the bigger project. And that took off from there. For sure, for sure, man. That's what's up, that's what's up. That's what gets you these yeah. plaques, man. What was it like getting that first plaque though? You was like, yo, I really gotta, like, I'm not even an artist and I got a plaque and I used to be in the music business. Like, <laughs> Hey, no, that, like, it's a gratifying feeling that it, 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 it's like you accomplish that goal you have always wanted to accomplish. And now if you are hungry, you want more. I want more now. I want more, like, I, I think I did a music video that, well, I don't think, I know I did a music video won a Grammy for music video of the year. I, I was supposed to have a Grammy sitting back here somewhere. So I need to go track that down and get it. But that's, you know, accolades that you want and trophy that you want to put on your wall so you can show your 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 nieces, your nephews, your mama, your daddy, your grandchildren, your, your children, children, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I mean, it's something that they never can take away from you. No doubt, no doubt. Now you may not have got a Grammy, but you've definitely been a part of hip hop history just in one way or another. But what was your proudest moment in music? just being involved in 
He said, your proudest moment in music. <laughs> you, was, you was a part, your videos were, I mean, your casting in these videos was a part of history. Like, you gotta remember. Yeah, yeah. well, well I, I, I would say that then. That, that would be one of the biggest ones I would say is winning an actual Grammy for the video of the year for Kendrick Lamar Humble. Thanks. Like, I was a part of it. I don't actually have the physical Grammy, but hey, I got to figure out how I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, man, but you was a part of something that where, I mean, the artist literally got a full surprise. So. Yeah. But I mean, just what's, a, what's another proud moment for you in music, just in music that you saw transpire in music, that you saw, that you was in the background and you was like- Oh, yeah. that I actually seen in yeah. music. Yeah. Uh, Man, that's a that's a that's a tougher right now because I'd have been through a lot of scenarios and situations. You've seen beefs in and everything. You've seen people come to the set in beefs and everything, man. So. Yeah, like like yeah, I I didn't see Well, actually, I, I want to say I would say interesting moment would be when I was I was at the Fifty Cent up in the club video, you know, and Suge Knight was coming. <laughs> yeah. You know, so all the word was like, oh, should come, should come. And he got about like 30 essays with him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he like, should come. In. And that's when I seen 50 wasn't just rapping when he was rapping. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I seen he was, they, they, was no, they wasn't backing down or nothing. And, and, and that opened my eyes up to a lot more things on that side of things. No doubt, no doubt. Game was there too, so it was like... Yeah, yeah, that's actually when I first met the game. He probably don't even remember, but I actually <laughs> first met the game at that situation because he looked familiar to me, you know what I mean? And turned out, I think, later, like, it's because the area I grew up in, I might have met him around there before, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. But yeah, actually, yeah. not only just being the boss, man, you you also, what uh, what is your favorite video that you joined the part of that you was casting? And she was like, hey, I'm gonna get in here too. So what is your favorite video, man? My favorite video that I, like when I got into the business side of things, I really wasn't trying to be, be like even right now, I don't really do interviews. You know what I'm saying? Like this is probably, <laughs> This is probably like an interview I, I've done in like maybe like 10 years, probably. You know, I don't really do interviews like that, but I kind of fall back. I don't really just try to jump in the scene. I think somebody might have threw me in some video, maybe an E40 video or something, like a director, but like, like, but I, I didn't, I wasn't like, hey, I just want to get in this video. I, I just not, I'm gonna fall behind the scenes. I want to be a fly on the wall. I want a more of an executive stature as opposed to mm. being all in it. But if I got to be in it, I got to do what I got to do. I'm going to put on this work hat and jump in. All right. Maybe not music video, but man, what about a film? You was like, oh, shit. I'm out. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to get in here. I'm going to get my SAG credit. I got to get some shit. Uh, that, that I, I've actually been in some before because I started on, in front of the camera before this. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was like, yeah, I was on the Parkers. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> uh, uh, Johnson Family Vacation, You Guys Serve, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? I've been a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? I, I actually got my SAG stuff and all that, you know what I mean? So that wasn't really something I wanted to jump in as I'm casting it, you know what I mean? When I'm when I'm in work mode, I'm in work mode. I'm not trying to tap dance and then jump behind and, and feel myself tap dancing. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, no doubt, man. Um, I would ask you, man, watching videos now, man, how is it different for you watching, just watching video music videos now? Because I know a lot of us, like, we, being behind the scenes, it's like every time we watch something, it's like we can't just organic or naturally enjoy it. Like, we're literally looking at it like, oh, that fool in the wrong spot. Or that person doing this, they ain't even supposed to be doing that. Or this person ain't even saying the right line or something or, like, anything like that. Like, what do you, what do you see now, man, when you be watching just music videos? But what I see now, like when I watch videos that I've done, no, nah, like just random, just random videos, man. Not videos you've done, just you know, just watching videos, like just you know, just seeing videos, man. But you, I mean, you do so many, so it's like, yeah. So, so what's the what's the exact question though? You said when I'm watching, yeah. or what do I see? Yeah. What are you, you watching videos, man? What do you see now? Like, what do you see as far as just watching videos now? Just regular, just regular. No, I, I see the video. I, I, well, when I look at the video, I look at it like, okay. Off top, did I cast this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, 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 or did, did my team cast it? Who said, then, <laughs> or, 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 like, 
it's kind of rare. I don't see new faces if they do it it's from me. But I'll be like, if, if I didn't cast it, who casted it and why didn't I cast it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then if I didn't cast and I see all my people, I go, oh yeah, emails did that too because you just follow my trend. <laughs> so you say they, they copy in the sauce, man? You got people yeah, out here. No, no, I, I, absolutely. Like the name of this game and any game is be original, bro. So all the copycat stuff, that don't give you longevity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're in and out by that time. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, the more original you are, the more sauce you bring to the table, the long, the longer you're going to be in this business. So I respect originality. For sure. For sure. Now, man, you know, we, we had Tom Brady just win the Super Bowl, man. So I got to ask you, man, is you, are, are, is Ed Mills the, Ed, the Tom Brady of, uh, of casting, of casting directors? If I can be the Tom Brady, I will be. But I got a lot more years to go before I get to that level. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, shit, you already, you was already there. Everything you, every big artist be like, hey, we need some girls. Hey, call, call Ed. He got, he got him. Call Mills Ticket. He got him. But see, that's just great marketing and branding. I, I made them aware of my name. I hit them with the emails, did it hashtag, and the girl sent emails, did it. That outbranded everybody so they was aware of me from that. That's how I made them aware of my name to be able to call me. Because if you don't know where to go get them from, you're going to go hit any and everybody. Mm, facts. Right? right? Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, eventually, hopefully, like I said, God's grace, yeah, let's be time ready. I want to keep that <laughs> money coming in. <laughs> I, I want to, what, what, you get $25 million a year? I need that. He get more than that now. Next year, he gonna, they be like, look, you want another one? He be like, look, how much the league going to pay me? Not just yeah. the how much? How much the league? The league is gonna pay me because I'm a yeah. I'm drawing, not just this organization. <laughs> I'm drawing millions of people on me on a weekly basis. Like the league guys to pay me. Hey, he does it so effortlessly too. So it's like wow, man. He does. He does, man. But uh, I, I, I need. It's funny. Like a lot of, a lot of people always comment on my stuff. Like with the gold, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, man, I'm not a go guy. I'm just now getting started. There's so many, it's so many other people that had done it before me and did it at a high level and still doing it at a high level. I got ways to go. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a go to your eyes. Y'all probably only see this level. It's other levels. I only, you know? only see them artists that y'all like that. <laughs> it might be. Yeah, well, we're just the all the top, we're just all the top artists. So I get it. Yeah, <laughs> facts, 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 man. But uh, so, man, it's talking about that, like, Explain how competitive this casting directing business is, man. How competitive is it? Well, it's even become even more competitive now, man. Like everybody think they can do it. You know what I mean? Everybody think, oh yeah, I'm gonna just go grab some girls. It's it's not about grabbing girls. It's about getting the treatment, dissecting that treatment, getting in the director head, getting in the artist head, and then creating your own style to to work within the, all these realms. You know what I mean? So now, and then I got to switch an audible. Now, I know this whole team and what they want. Now, I got to go over here and think, oh, what Chris Brown want? Yeah, okay, now, what Tiger want? There's two different looks. What YG want? What, what, what Snoop want? It's all different looks. It may look, appear to the untrained eye. Oh, yeah, it's all similar. No, it's not. You, It's a, it's an art to it. And then I got to make everything look new and fresh to you. So, like, say you're a producer and I'm giving you a looks. I might see you a bunch of girls for this actual job. Now I got the same artist and the same production company, the very next job. And I got to bring you all new faces. And I got to do this the next five times y'all call me. Everybody can't do that. So, but, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the, the competitive nature is always there. So, you know, it's always going to be somebody trying to knock you off. And it's, you always try to get to the next level. So I'm smart enough to watch and see the next one's coming up under me or or even trying to get closer, steal my style. Because people send me shit all day long. So I watch what's going on. I'm not unaware of anything that's going on in my city or any other city. <laughs> sure, for sure, man. Now, Dylan, that you've dealt, or not even dealt, you've done, you've you've brought up a lot of women and men in this business, man. But um, I want to ask you, as far as like your stable goes from, from beginning to now, man, who was the one that made you the most proudest? Mm, the most proudest. That that's a that's a really tough question. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's quite a few that's progressing went to different le levels. You know what I mean? Like I'ma say 
I'm gonna say what makes me most proudest, not even the talent, so more so right now. I would say my team I've put together and developed and executed behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say uh Ryan Smith, my partner, Wallet Green, Lala Means out of Atlanta, and Jay Milan out of Houston. And did I say ring the queen? No, if I didn't, didn't. <laughs> yeah, if I, if I, yeah, if I didn't ring the queen as well, you know what I mean? Because they all became bosses in their own right. And they started off, you know what I mean? Not knowing much and, and, and developing it in this field and expanding it and taking it out and running with the torch. So that's like that Jay-Z effect to me. If you put enough people, you will never fall off. And that's what I started to do. For sure, for sure, man. Is there any models that you uh, that you may have overlooked that ended up becoming big names? I'm gonna say, at the time, I wouldn't say I overlooked her, but she was just so far at the time. Uh, and I think she was in college at the time when she was emailing me. It was uh, uh, Jenna Fumes. She yeah. would she would email me, hit me the whole nine, and at the time. Like, I was like, uh, I don't know if I can book you because I don't know if you're going to really fly in and make it at the time. Yeah. Et cetera, because yeah. it was for L.A. jobs at the time. But that's one that's really, really big and, and, and doing her thing. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, I mean, man, who are some, um, like, damn, you've had a lot. You've had a lot run through, come through. Like, you've had a lot, man. So, like, um, I want to ask, man. Who's... Yeah, I can name some of the ones that's successful doing their thing I'm right now. Say, like, man, based on, like, what we've seen in the past, man, like, you know, when it comes to music videos throughout the throughout the years, it's always been it's always been that one it girl that would be in all the videos are most most requested, man. Who is Who are some most requested girls that you remember coming up through you? Through me or just, like, me seeing at that time? Nah, just coming up through you. I mean, you can have the ones that you saw at that time that you really admired, but I mean, just coming up through yeah, you. Uh, I'm gonna say, some of the ones the most sought after. Uh, I'm gonna say Brittany Elena, uh, Lolo Woods, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the wild and out girls pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of them, uh, you know, started. I can't even watch Wilder now now without being like, hey, I, that's me, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, a, a, a lot of them girls, you know, came from up under my branch. Uh, Neandra Brooks was requested a lot. You know, uh, it's a girl, uh, she was requested a lot. Uh, Nicole uh, Linnell, she got a, Nicole Linnell clothing, she's a big boutique, she got a book. She got like a million dollars in sales in her clothing. She's real big and established. She been she used to be requested a lot. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. It's a whole lot, so I know it's a, it's a bunch going on. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm for sure, for sure. But um, I mean, like you said, you had a lot, man. So like, what were some of the, um, I would say, what were some of the what were some of the surprising the if the most surprising ones to you? The most surprising. One I thought wasn't gonna hit and hit. I, I I don't I don't think any was surprising because anybody I kind of like start getting them going and thinking they gonna go and make them work, you, normally works, you know. And a lot of them work faster than than you expect, you know. What I mean they they jump and and start rolling like wildfire. Like uh or try to think of one that was kind of unexpected, but I don't think any was really unexpected because, you know, when you know, you know. And I got the touch. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For sure, man. But like you said, man, you've had some that you've admired, man. Who are some of your video vixens that you admired back then? You know, the back in the day, Melissa Ford, of course. Uh Lauren London, she 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 was one of the ones when you first saw her, like, damn, who is that? You know, <laughs> you know, I remember when Amber Rose first hit the scene, you like, wow, who is that? You, you, you own them real tough. And I think that some of those are probably the top right there that, that I was on. 
Sure, for sure, man. Is there bidding wars, man, between y'all casting directors when it comes to these women? Bidding wars as far as like getting them to come to your agency or getting them to come to your team. Uh, it, it, it ain't really bidding wars, you know what I'm saying? Because once they find out who the top dog is, where you think they come? <laughs> <laughs> That's like going to play in the NBA or the D League. Which one are you going to? Man. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure, man. Have you ever had girls, have you ever had artists um not fighting, not physically fighting over girls, but like, hey, look, I'll I how much she go, how much do pair her? All right, I'll pair this much to be in my video and whatnot. How many how Yeah, many I, I, I I've had that before because you know they might have been booked on a prior job. Or something with with, a, with another company or artist, and I and I call them, and they know when I call them, and I give them the personal call. It's not my assistant. Damn, I got to do it because he gave me all the work all the year. So I better go over here and and get this little more money and get the more work throughout the year. So I kind of use my juice on that sometimes. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I'm booked over here today, Mill. Look, I really need you today. Who gonna get you more work throughout the year? Me or them? <laughs> oh. And they're like, oh, okay. Dang, why you put me in this position? But sorry, I can't come over there, guys. <laughs> Making mafia moves and stuff like, hey, <laughs> make hey, the man, call. make the call. Hey, <laughs> hey so, so I remember we had we used to meet, sit down and meet with Suge, and I had, I had an artist at the time. Uh, you know, he was gonna sign, and I just sit down and meet with him, and he said we was like questioning how he did things and how he did, but he said, no, I did what I had to do to get to where I needed to be. And sometimes you got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> got to put that strong arm down, man. You got to put that strong arm down. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, being that you've had so much success with just like, you know, everyday women or, you know, up and coming models, Instagram models, I know you get hit up by the famous people now to be like, hey, look, I see you do great work, man. I'm trying to see if you could do some great work for me. So who are some of your celebrity clients that you've, that you've managed to to get involved with over the years. Celebrity well, client that I've gotten involved with, as far as what I'm, as far like, as work, like like working with them. Mm -hmm. Uh you go down the list. Uh, Jamie Foxx, Snoop, Tiger, Chris <laughs> Brown. Who's Jamie Foxx? Uh, you up like, hey, look, man, I see you do great work. I need you to come. I need you to help me out. <laughs> Tyrese. <laughs> like you, 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 you go, you go down the list, bro. Like from from actors to comedians to to artists, et cetera, et cetera, Man, I ain't too many people I haven't worked with in this business in some capacity. You know what I mean? Like I would say, well, I can't even say Jay Z because I worked with him in a project, but I haven't worked with him behind the scenes, and that's I would want to do that at one point. Jay Z and I would say Beyonce. I don't think I've never done a Beyonce. What? Yeah, what? I've never done Beyonce. They, they, they ain't, she ain't called me yet. Look, I swear <laughs> I thought you did the party video. I was like, this nigga did that video. It's too many. No, I, a lot of my talent probably was in there, but they, like you said, they might have hit an agency or something. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They didn't know I already had a direct line to them, but they didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, yeah. you ever had clients come humble themselves? Like, look, I tried to do it this way, but you was... Oh, all, all, all the time. I, I, I've had people try to jump ship and go to a whole other situation and thinking they ain't working, I'm like, oh, I don't need them to do this and that. Okay, cool, do your thing, I'm not tripping. You know, it's, it's no problems, you know, but, you know, they come back and then they understand, like, dang, you was really pushing me to get more money and doing this and doing this. It's like, I kind of be a little agent within that because I try to make sure the talent is right. I'm not just a ca casting director and go for anything. I kind of let you know what the minimums is and what they need to get and what time they need to get breaks and lunches and et cetera, et cetera. And, make sure they paid on time and all and models start realizing that later once they seen it wasn't greater <laughs> uh is it easier to deal with male models it depends because you, you you it depends on the person and the personality because males should be just like females <laughs> Facts. yeah it dep depends on your character how you was raised <laughs> for sure, for sure. But Dylan, having so many, having so much talent, man, do they? Does it ever like? Do they ever feel some type of way when you be like, "Look, man, like, I wanted that video, or you didn't? Why you got? Why you putting everybody in the same? Why you putting this person in more videos than me? 
why are you doing this that, and third so yeah yeah you def- you you definitely get that aspect of things man like that that comes it, it, a lot of times it's like sometimes women think you're in a relationship with them cuz they, they 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 think you're supposed to always get them all the jobs and they don't get all of them sometimes so you know they might go through a run where they might get five six in a row you know and with no different production companies, different artists and stuff. And then a couple of weeks or a month, they don't get nothing. And they wonder, what's going on? You don't like me anymore. Is it my, my look? Cedric, et Cedric, et you guys let them know that's just the way the business goes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's just the way the business is. And, you know, you're going get, to get your run. You got to be prepared for the off time and build up content and then come back again for another run. And it just goes off and on like that throughout the year, every year. For sure. You see, for I sure. understand it. For sure, man. But not every day is a perfect day, man. So tell us a, a story about a difficult time on set. A difficult time on set is a time I show up to set and the client is unhappy. So I got to make my client happy. You know, so I got to figure out how to get a new talent on set, get rid of this one without making them, making them happy. Mm-hmm. Still make sure they pay, make sure they get money. But, oh, yeah, you know, they just cut the scene, you know, whatever it may be. And make it easy because it just not might not be their cup of tea where they thought one way and it was another way. And, but then I still got to do it in a calm manner where I'm not stressed out, but I'm really stressed and <laughs> fighting myself with inside. But I got to make it happen because I got to be the one that they don't, I don't let see sweat. For sure, for sure, man. That's definitely true, man. Like I said, you dealing with all these uh, beautiful ladies, man. I know it's hard on you to have a regular relationship, man. But what what's it like, man? What's this? What's this dating as a as a entrepreneur out here as yourself, man? What's it like? Well, I, I'm gonna say for me, dating kind of hard because a lot of times, girls off top think, oh, you got all the women. All the women throw themselves at you, et cetera, et cetera. So they're a little intimidated. So, and then when you finally get one, you think she's cool, think she's secure in it, but then she really not because her friends are in her ears or her mama's in her ear saying, girl, Yo, phone, you, don't, no, you don't believe he's faithful? <laughs> 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 wow, yeah. your phone going off all night long. Why he got all these Instagram photos with all these, with all these girls? What? And, and, and my phone like rings constantly. Like I could be on a date, bro, and it might not even be a girl, but it's a producer or somebody calling me about a job or director or artist. So it's like I've learned now to kind of like just turn off my phone at that time, or not really turn it off, just put it on silent, put it away from me. So then that way we can have a good date conversation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what's the conversations like when you have girls that you are like pursuing? Like what's the like when you tell them about your like the importance of your business and just the whole landscape of your business. How do you how do you have that conversation with them? So they can understand, well, they can feel comfortable. Yeah, for the most part, some of them be kind of knowing already. So so it's a little easier. But then, you know, I kind of just break it down to them, let them know I'm a casting director, you know what I'm saying? And break everything down how I do from beginning to end. And, you know, let them know they ain't got nothing to worry about. And they can be secure and what we got moving forward. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. <laughs> I mean, it ain't worked yet. <laughs> hey, hey, for real. But, it, 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 but like, sometimes it works for a certain extent of time. <laughs> oh, no. has, uh, man, I got to ask, man, has this, has this whole, has the success ever gotten to your head? No, man, where I come from, I, I, I don't, I don't allow it to get to my head. And, you know, I, good structure in my home, you know me with my mother and father. So I, I I give them as much kudos as I can, and they keep me grounded. My family keep me grounded. My sisters and my brothers and shit, my nieces, et cetera, man. Like everybody around me and my cousin, we all, especially my cousin, that's my partner. He really keep me grounded. You know, every now and then I might let my head get big. I might have felt myself, then they got to bring me back down. And I reevaluate every so often just in case I'm grounded as well. No doubt, no doubt. But uh, just being in this business, man, it's all about evolution, man. And you did the, you know, you did the influencer aspect of it. But what do you see 
yourself evolving as as we continue on with this? Uh, that's probably a cliche term, but I see myself as a mogul in the entertainment business with multifaceted things, uh, you know, TV shows, films, uh, label, uh, you know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. You know what I mean? Anything to do in the entertainment business, I'm going to conquer. Now, what are some things that you tried already that failed? Because you can't win. Oh, I, yeah. It, it, everything up under the thing I just named, I've done things in, where, like film, TV, et cetera. I put things together and they failed, not done. Music failed, not done. Uh, casting failed, not done. You name it. Everything I'm doing now, I've done and failed at. And I'm just getting better and better at it each and every day. Sure, for sure. Now, I know a lot of Instagram models that haven't worked with you yet are still coming up, man. They're going to ask you, like, look, I'm trying to make sure my followers is up and I'm ready to, you know, meet your presence, man. Give them some tips as far as how to maneuver and how to, you know, brand themselves on, on these social media platforms. I would say create original content that gets you noticed that's shareable you got to create original shareable content and when i say about shareable i mean things people gonna like and share or if i got a homeboy like man did you see this today and i hit the share button to send today dm Fact. simple if it's not <laughs> likable shareable content you're not going nowhere now you it's an uphill battle not everything, to do, not everything has to do with just being revealing. That's what you're saying. No, absolutely. It's got to be just shareable content. It could be a conversation. It could be a wink of an eye. If you know how to wink your eye and it looks sexy enough, hey, they're going to share it. Like, man, you see where she did that? <laughs> yeah, facts, facts, facts. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, man. But, uh, man, I don't want to waste too much more of your time, man. But I want to ask you this. Man, you're not wasting my time. I, hold on. I want to cut you off. <laughs> I appreciate you even reaching out to me to even want to grant this interview to me, man. I appreciate it, and I'm humbled by it. No problem, no problem, man. But I want to ask you, man, what was your favorite video to work on? My favorite video to work on to date? Mm. It's a lot of them, boy. <laughs> I, I, I'm not even going to say favorite, but it's one of the top and most recognizable because it brought a star back to the light. And it also brought me a platinum plaque. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the the, the, the Tiger Taste video oh. is probably one of the biggest and it's one of the biggest because it did so much for so many people and it brought me my first platinum plaque. Man, but that location though? Not hey, that location was bananas. Man. <laughs> Oh. And it's in California, though. That's the crazy yeah, part. It's like in Palm Springs or like way out Coachella. there. Coachella, yeah, Coachella. Yeah, yeah. He was like, how much was that house? <laughs> I, I I don't even know. But like when, when I left, I guess they do private things there. Yeah. But the, the guy who runs the site was like, Man, can I get your number? You brought all these girls. You did this. Let me get your number. We have high-end clients that come and we need eye candy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was a good thing. How do you make sure not to fall for the okie doke, man? You know, the ones that be like, hey, man, we need some girls for this. And you'd be like, it'd be some shady shit. How do you make sure not well, to fall? Well, 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 they kind of feel my demeanor and know my demeanor. I know how I'm doing business. So they kind of know what not and what not, what to and what not to bring. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because nine times out of ten, I'll be showing up anyway. I, I'll be there or an assistant be there. So ain't no funny business going on anywhere. Facts, facts. Man, but you yeah. know. You got the, uh, man, have you done uh, organizations yet? Have you done, like, uh, sports? Have you done the Lakers, the, you know, the Rams? Have you done anything? Clippers? I, 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 have, I haven't done the Lakers or the Rams, but I booked the girls for the, like, from the Lakers and, and the Rams and, you know what I'm saying, and Chargers, et cetera, et cetera, Clippers, all that type of stuff. But uh, organizations, like, I've worked with like ESPN and different brands and stuff like that and put provided girls for different things like that, but not necessarily the exact organization, but hey, who knows? Time, a time will tell if I, if I will or not. How do you stay motivated, man? 
how you stay motivated with all this? Man, my family motivates me and, and where I come from drives me. So, you know what I mean? Like, like I got self-motivation every day. Like I said, I, I know where, where we come from and you know, you don't never want to go there again. Man, facts, facts. I mean, and I know you got a mom just like every other black person got a mom. And I know your mom be sitting there sliding with the jokes. Like you think you something else because I ain't one of your little <laughs> girlfriends out here in these streets. <laughs> hey, 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 man. The funny thing is, yeah, I did a grand opening for my uh for my compound office space downtown. And you know, I had moms and pops here. Pops, you know, rest in peace. He, he passed away last year. But moms, you know, she told the story where you know, in the beginning, she used to tell me, I was working at UPS, don't quit your good job. You know, it's old school mentality. Yeah, yeah. Don't quit your good job. You got good benefits, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I said, well, what you think now, Ma? <laughs> she was like, no, you did it. You proved me wrong and, and you're doing well. <laughs> so, you know, she, she kind of, you know, she's one of my biggest cheerleaders at, at, at what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. You know what I mean? And, uh, like you said, you always got on a meal ticket shirt every day, uh, sweatsuit. <laughs> Something, man, she represented and putting people on, passing her nail lady the cards and all that type of stuff. <laughs> for sure, for sure, man. What was it like opening a, a building, man, with your name on it for this for this company? Man, it, it, it was great. It, it was something long overdue where I thought I never really had to do it. You know what I mean? Because I was like, what I needed for it. And I was like, you know what? I need something, a staple. But I created more than just an office space. You know, I got, it's a storefront office space. You know what I mean? And then I got a photo set up. It's a one-stop shop, pretty much. And a recording studio in here. You can come here and do a podcast, whatever you need, man, and, and get it done. For sure, for sure. Now, we're going to see a, a model podcast from me in the, in the near future, man, you know? Yeah, man. I, I'm going to get something going. Like, uh, I had my nieces just kind of doing it first. They did, like, a little podcast they got about to put out. And then uh, I got models actually coming in on Monday and to come do their own podcast and I'm gonna oversee it, kind of produce it. Then eventually I'm gonna do one, do some question and answers with some probably elites in the industry that I just bring in here and there, and you know, some few models here and there and, you know, get some insight and knowledge on different things. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, man, this year, man, or last year was crazy, crazy. Man, how did you maneuver, man, throughout this pandemic? You was still, you know, I mean, I know artists was like, look, it's it's up to us, but how did you make sure your people were safe and you wasn't just helping enable this deadly pandemic well, we had? In the pandemic, man, like, you know, beginning of the year, it was kind of rolling a little bit still from the momentum of the, the previous year. And then, you know, I did the grand opening of my, uh, of my storefront and then it went like a week later. Yeah. Shut down. Yeah. Everything shut down. So I had to shut everything down. So I was thinking, well, damn, what do I have? And I said, you know what? We got to be at home. I know artists still got to sell their records. Brands still got to sell their merch, sell, sell, sell their product. So I started reaching out to the companies and the people I've already been working with. And literally my marketing side of things kept me afloat throughout that process <laughs> till the job started rolling back. But then, you know, a lot of other places were still open. So I was getting a lot of Florida jobs. So a lot of jobs out of Florida <laughs> and, 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 and like, you know, Miami and Atlanta So and, and New York. So I was working on the East Coast more than I was here. So like I said, if I ever slowed up here, I was able to work somewhere else. And that came into fruition and that actually helped me guide myself through the pandemic. For sure, for sure, man. That's It was definitely the pandemic. I mean, Atlanta just never stopped. It was closed for like a week and then it was back open. Uh, out yeah. here, this Texas has been wide open since like three months after the pandemic. And then, you know, Florida was just like, hey, we just gonna take our chances. So yeah, I mean, it was, it's just, it's great. But how do you feel about this pandemic, man? How do you feel about, uh, what have you, it has it made you change some of your, your practices? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I don't really pop up to set as, as much no more. You know what I'm saying? That type of yeah. stuff, you know what I mean? I, I kind of been staying away. Like I, am, I haven't really traveled. I normally would have been in Texas by now. I probably would have been in uh, Atlanta by now, Miami by now, just popping in and out, networking, you know, nurturing my relationships. But I kind of just been doing everything from a remote location. And that changed a lot of my practices and even sending the girls, everybody getting 
COVID tested before. So they got to get so on and so forth. Oh, so that's what Cardi was talking about when she was like, I got to pay for COVID testings all the time. That shit ain't cheap. <laughs> no, yeah. And they be doing those $200 COVID tests. And then they sometimes they do them two times. They might do them two days before and then do them right before the, the act on the shoot day. Yeah. Though, and imagine if you got like a bunch of extras on your set and a, all the production behind the scenes and you paying 200, it might be 30 grand just in COVID tests. For sure, for sure, man. Um, actually, uh, have you? Is there a movie you've watched recently that have that has really inspired you to get into doing like film? That really, uh, really ignited. I, 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 I wouldn't say it inspired. None has inspired me to do film because, like, like ever since I started my company back in, I came up with the idea about two thousand and three. Mm-hmm. And my tagline was always music, film, fashion, and sports. Didn't know what I was going to do in any of it, but it was <laughs> always music, film, fashion, and sports. Mill Ticket Entertainment, and my first card is up under Mill Ticket Entertainment, it said music, film, fashion, sports. So I've always going, was wanted to do that world. I knew I always wanted to be like uh, uh, a Disney, a Sony, a Universal, different aspects in the business, but under the same umbrella. For sure, for sure, man. Like, uh, I like. How do you uh, feel about? Um, we've we've had a, a lot of people that have passed that really inspired this culture. Just just being game changers and just being innovatives like yourself, man. Who are some people that really inspired you throughout this journey? Well, the first person that came to my mind when you was talk even before you even finished it was, of course, Nipsey Hussle. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was blessed enough to know him, and and work with him uh, from one of his beginning projects, you know what I mean? And, you know, we built a relationship over the time. He knew he could call me and I didn't a and r a few projects behind the scenes where I didn't got verses from him to, to up and coming artists and on some respectable rates where he was by be charging 50 K to somebody else, but you know, it was love for me and, and I salute him for that. And he showed a lot of people way how to really get to business and get to money. For sure. You know what I mean? And, and, and into ownership, of course. For sure. I was going, I mean, I was going to say some people like, you know, like the Hugh Hefners and Larry Flints and all that. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but see that, that's what everybody always, you know, like, oh. in, like go to. But of course, of course, I'm inspired. Everybody likes Hugh Hefner, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I like his model. I see his model. But, you know, I took some of his model and put my twist to it. And, and created my own branch, you know what I mean, of what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Of course, yeah, of course. Mill Ticket Mansion coming. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about have you ever thought about doing print, like your own magazine, your own Mill Ticket magazine? You, you know what's funny? I, I thought about it before, but you know, magazines has been a downfall. You know what yeah. I mean? So, and not really many people are jumping into digital magazines you know what i mean my my team had we was going to because we thought about all that we was going to do a calendar but it was mm-hmm. a, a specific twist to it and, and our version of a dope calendar but then we couldn't do it because of this pandemic stuff was going on and it had a lot to do with things i ain't trying to say too much but uh <laughs> that, that that the pandemic stopped so yeah. once it opened back up i think we're gonna bring it back and, and do our version of a calendar, which would be kind of like a mag. For sure, for sure, man. Now, um, is there a way for models to make, to turn this into a residual, like, source of income? Well, they already are with this OnlyFans stuff and et cetera, because that's residual income. Once you sign on as a subscription base, it's, it's coming out every month. What, what are you <laughs> What are your thoughts on this OnlyFans, man? What is your thoughts on this? I mean, I know people, man, it, 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 people only, like only, OnlyFans. So. OnlyFans is is like the new trap to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, for women at least, like it's their opportunity to get rich. You know, like you gotta just you gotta just determine what's gonna make you rich or what's gonna make you wealthy or make you some type of money. How you do it is the question. Like you got to present yourself in a way that you ultimately happy with, you know what I mean? Because it don't necessarily have to be 
you know, how they make it only fans, the nudity, et cetera, et cetera. It can be, it's some people on there doing cooking shows. It's some people on there doing tutorials. It's some people doing on there doing workouts, exercises, and so on and so forth. So how do you want to do it? Don't think of the negative way and the easy way, but think of a way that's beneficial to you and your family. For sure, for sure, man. You, just, you didn't drop major gems, man. But I want to ask you, man, who is the celebrity that gave you your best advice that you work with? Uh, I would say, that's funny. I, I met uh, R. Kelly manager years ago, and he's always seen me running around, you know, the Hollywood scene. And he was like, I kept saying, you know, Hey, how are you doing your thing, man? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> like, he was like, take trying out your vocabulary and say you're working towards or you're on the path to something in that realm. And once I started taking that out of my vocabulary, it was actually happening. Now I'm not trying to do something, I'm actually doing it. Facts, facts, facts. Do you have any dreams left that you still want to accomplish with this business? Absolutely, man. I'm just getting started, man. This, this, this is just the beginning, man. Like you, you, you seeing the baby of it. Like all, all the things you, we've been talking about is, is is the the path to where I need to get to to set a foundation. I just now got a foundation. Now I got to build up. <laughs> man, how do you make sure your homeboys don't go to these sets though? Because like the taste set, it was literally four dudes. Everybody else was girls. Like, how do you make sure your homeboys don't be like, hey? Like, yo, bro, I know you finna be over there. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go over there. I'm trying to get in this. Well, that's something I set forth at a at an early age. Even when I was running around into a event or a party or anything, I kept my circle tight. It, it would only be people that's about the business that's around me that I know that got a good head on their shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Or or, or a girl that that was with me. So I'm either with girls or one or two dudes max and you lucky if you're one of them two dudes that's with me because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? you go ride the coattails with me you know what yeah. i'm saying and, 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 and we was gonna get it in you better have you'll get the gab on too and we got a plan to to, to 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 come up out of there working you know for sure for sure man well yeah. like i said man it was a it's a pleasure having you it's a pleasure you taking the time out man i know you don't do obviously you said you don't do too many interviews it's a pleasure for just me i, I need to start to see you up hey look my uh my general manager, which is Lala Means, she was like, man, you, you need a manager yourself and you need a PR publicist because the world need to know what you do and what you've done because you were really the man behind the scenes and people don't know you gave a lot of people careers. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. So that's why I actually took the interview. That's <laughs> I, 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 I was like, you know, I was like, you know what? I got to start letting the world know who I am and what I do and let the company know because that way I can put more people on. Facts, facts. I mean, it's nothing better than having a team that you you employ. On, yeah. It's nothing better than that, man. It's nothing better than that. And, you know, I don't know if y'all getting the health benefits yet, but, you know, y'all getting to that point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. No, I get you. Hey, look, I, damn, I want to show you. I just had, I just called for uh, Kaiser earlier. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to see if I could, what they shit talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Facts, 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 man. Especially with this whole pandemic, man. With this whole yeah, no, I, I've been looking at it, you know, as a businessman, and and I'm getting older. I got to make sure, you know, everybody else is right too. No doubt, no doubt. Well, but yeah, I said that to say this. Yeah, go I'm ahead. The interviews. If you got any other ones? Let me know, man. <laughs> do, do, I, I see you a writer, man. Go ahead and do me some write up, man. man the next one, everything I, else. Look, the me, the next one we gonna do is definitely gonna be for Forbes or something like that. We got. Hey, hey, let's, let's, let's make it happen. I'm with it. All right, facts, facts, facts. But hey, like I said, man, thank you for taking the time out, man. If you guys don't know, man, it's emails, man. Make sure you run down the um the social media so everybody can make sure they know where to follow you at. I mean, obviously you got emails, it and meal ticket. You got meal ticket. Man, look, 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 let, me, let me do how it's supposed to be done, man. Go Come ahead, on. Go ahead. <laughs> look, it's your boy emails did it. Meal ticket, Mr. Armor out. Fuck you. You know the rest. I'm not even going to finish no here because I don't know if his kid's watching. But y'all know the rest of it, man. My name is E. Mills, CEO of Mill Ticket Entertainment. We function in L.A., New York, Miami, Atlanta, Chicago, Houston, any major city. You didn't heard about us or my counterparts that's in the city running. So y'all got us. Maybe we got 
millticketcasting.com. That's M-I-L-L casting.com. And then we got millticketent.com. That's M-I-L-L again. And then social media, Mill Ticket CEO on Instagram. And that leads you to everything else. Oh, same thing on, on the Clubhouse's emails did it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we on Clubhouse too. I ain't been on there as much because you know I got to figure out how, how I want to get a game out. <laughs> on there, boy, that shit addictive, man. Oh man, yeah, yeah, man. It's boom, we got got it, man. For that's a damn good question, and emails just answered all of them just flawlessly. So look, man, we hey, are, man. we got it. We out of here. Peace. Thank you, man. Appreciate you.